Sometimes when you're traveling down the road, you see something that just makes you pull over and stop, even if it's not on your agenda. And that's what we're here to check out today, the Tillamook Air Museum, housed in a World War II blimp hangar. Built in 1943. We were just reading online and apparently this is like the largest single span wooden structure in the world. Now it's running a bit late here. There's only about uh, 90 minutes before they close. So it's going to be a rushed visit, but we got to do what we got to do. I am super excited to learn that the Tillamook Air Museum is partnered with the Oregon Fire Service Museum to house some of their equipment here while their building is being built. 1936 American La France. But wait, there's more. Nineteen forty four Sea Grave. And this unit here. That is gorgeous. Nineteen fifty eight Persh fire truck, and I love this display with the ladder extended going up into the corner with fake fire. That's awesome. Now uh, come outside into the rain and get a better view of the Ericsson Air Crane Mini Guppy. This Mini Guppy has quite the history. It was originally built for Pan American Airways in 1949 as a Boeing 377 Stratocruiser. It was in service with them until 1960 when it was returned to Boeing and then purchased by Aerospace Lines in 1963. They converted it to a Mini Guppy and it took its first flight in that format in 1967. They used it for a number of different things, including ferrying items like NASA's Pioneer 10 spacecraft. Finally, Ericsson Air Crane purchased it in 1988 and used it for transportation of their large Air Crane helicopters right up until 1994 when the museum acquired it and it was retired from service. The cargo floor is 13 feet wide, the maximum inside diameter is 18 feet, and this section here is 73 feet long. Of course, you know all about the engineering seat after your time on the Spruce Goose. Yes. <laughs> it's no the rams and everything where it separates. So that whole tail section just swings wide open and out of the way for loading whatever you need inside the Mini Guppy. Now I don't know if you can get a sense of the scale of this building, but there's your regular size man door. And just look at how high this thing goes and how wide it is. I mean, to think that this used to house a blimp back in World War II. This is just insane. Oh, there's kind of a track. There may have been a pulley or even a little, like, locomotive to open them. Yeah, I just can't get over how thick the doors are. The building alone is worth the price of admission. And then, of course, the fire trucks just are the icing on that cake. I mean, that's just fantastic. 
lots of water on the floor. Obviously a wood structure of this age isn't completely watertight and gives you an indication of just how much rain we're having outside right now. There it is, mooring ring for the blimp. And of course, no blimp can be complete without a bunch of happy aliens on it. 1944 Jeep Willys. Bare bones, basic, which is great. You can do field repairs very easily because there's nothing fancy to go wrong. Okay, so again, just trying to create a sense of scale for this size of this hangar. This is a full-size steam locomotive, complete with tender. And look how it is just dwarfed inside this building. Like, unbelievable. So here we go with the map of World War II blimp bases. We're way up there in Tillamook. You can see kind of all around the perimeter of the continental U.S. including Lakehurst, New Jersey where the Hindenburg famously crashed. Lots of photos of the construction. Those two cranes, 215 feet tall. Some more construction photos. There's hangar B almost complete. And here's some of the ships in action. to the helium room. Inside this room is all the machinery and piping that made it possible to move helium into and out of blimps during World War II. Without helium, blimps would not even be able to get off the ground. In front of you is a large motor that powered two compressors used to remove impure helium from the blimps. Once removed, this contaminated helium would be pumped into a massive 60-foot metal sphere once located right outside this helium room's windows. Feel free to walk around this machinery and imagine all the activity that went on in this hangar during World War II. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for the Tillamook Air Museum. As I said at the beginning, this was not one of our planned stops, and we got here, you know, an hour, 90 minutes before they closed, so... I didn't really have time to pre-plan what I wanted to see and record, so it was kind of a spliced together video, and I apologize for that, but I still hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you're enjoying this series on our Oregon Coast trip. Thanks so much. We'll see you at the next video.